Welcome to the world of 4D Madness, a series of fourth dimensional movie reviews. I am Dr. Schwarzenberg, and our job is to review every 4D film that has become part of our history. And 4D is just a fourth dimensional type that people would experience, whether it's a movie or a ride. And now that 4D is becoming a thing of the past, we think it's the best time to go ahead and review every one of them that has been put down in history. And now, I'm gonna let Triple B review one of those 40 films that we all know. What's up, my ghouls and goblins? Uh, yeah, this is Byron once again, and uh, welcome to the seventh episode of my 40 Manus review series. And uh, as you can see, I am wearing my Albert Einstein shirt that one of my shell drivers gave me. It's very cool. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, today I'm gonna be doing a review on another 4D film. And it's basically another Simic Cybrix film that was made, but, like, back in 2003, starring Christopher Lloyd. It was kind of like Goosebumps, but in 4D, plus it was just a kid's horror film. But, uh, I'm gonna be reviewing it anyway, since I still remember it to this day, but, like, in certain ways. It was shown at SeaWorld and Busch Gardens, it was shown at Filmingoland, and it was even shown at the Sensei Zoo one time, and that is Haunted Lighthouse. Now, uh, the plot is where Captain Jack, played by Christopher Lloyd, tells his grandkids, Mike and Ashley, a scary story about a lighthouse that's been abandoned for a hundred years, and that is cursed by two ghosts who turn out to be children. And uh, the next day, Mike and Ashley meet this kid named Edgar, who takes them to the lighthouse where things get more insane. And when they get to the lighthouse, they meet Edgar's sister named Annabelle, who has a very beautiful singing voice. Also, they reveal that both Edgar and Annabelle are actually the two ghosts that were cursed to remain forever in the lighthouse, as they try to turn Mike and Ashley into ghosts just like them. From the ghost kids being all creepy, to the weird CGI effects, the movie itself is just quite a story. But uh, in the end, the parents of the ghost children found them, and uh, they were having a good time at the seafood restaurant, especially from this huge water effect from the catfish surprise. Not to mention that spoiler. So uh, yeah, that's basically the plot of the film. Okay. What I will admit is that the movie itself is just downright corny. Like I said with Pirates 4D, it kind of is, and uh, like I said before, it's kind of like a kid's horror movie, you know, kind of like Goosebumps 4D, because, you know, it was, it was created by uh, R.L. Stein. I'm pretty sure 100% that the in-theater special effects really did help the movie itself by letting the audiences feel what the movie was like. But here's the thing. The acting was okay, the music was kind of corny, the CGI effects were so awkward, and uh, everything about it, including the plot itself, I mean, I mean, th the plot did make sense. It was just fine, but like, some of it was just, uh, meh, to be honest. Especially as I just watched it a couple times already this year as a whole. I actually tried watching it on YouTube once or twice, but uh, I basically didn't for some reason. But uh, I ended up watching it again, but as a downloaded version of the movie. And I got nothing to say about it, to be honest. Now... There was a time where we actually almost ended up seeing that freaking 40 film in person. Let me tell you a quick real life story about it. So uh, when I was a kid, we would often go to the Cincinnati Zoo and uh, they opened this attraction called the 40 Special Effects Theater. I did mention to you guys about it before, but uh, there actually was a 40 theater at the zoo. And it actually did look like a Disney and Universal attraction, to be honest. Especially with the pre-show room that was basically indoors and the theater and the gift shop on the other side. It was really cool. And what happened was that uh, we actually went to the zoo for the Halloween event that was going on at the time. And frankly, we were going to see Haunted Lighthouse. But what happened is that it turned out to be the fact that we only saw the Spongebob 40 film and not the Haunted Lighthouse film. So my Nana and my cousin Jaden were the only people in our family that saw the film in person and in that theater. And they were the only ones in our family that were actually lucky to see it. And I remember waiting outside for them when they got done since the film was like 
20 minutes. From there, my other family members and I did not get to see that movie. It was very devastating for us, but uh, in the end, by looking back, it's like, I really wish I could have seen that film in person, especially as a kid. Because, like, I don't know, maybe I would have had that love-hate passion to it. I don't know. Overall, I will say that uh, the movie was corny, and uh, since it is, I'm going to give it most likely a 3 out of 5. Now, it wasn't so bad, but uh, since it was just, you know, a kid's horror film, I don't know, man, like, here's the thing. If I saw it as a kid, then I would have loved it, maybe. But, like, watching it as an adult, it's like, okay, what is this? It's like, you know, I don't even know what to tell you, but, I mean, I really like how they have Leah Thompson and Christopher Lloyd in the film because they were actually from Back to the Future, so that's nice. But uh, if you have not seen the film, then uh, if you want to watch it on YouTube, go ahead. Because it's the only place that's available to watch the movie on. But that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching my 4D Madness review on Haunted Lighthouse. Uh, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, comment, and share if you want to. Uh, don't forget to check out more videos if you want to coming your way. And this is me, Byron, the Multiple Interest Man, as always, signing off. Double peace. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Sincerely, Dr. Schwartzenberg.